Welcome rail fans to part four of the six foot Titan trains flat car build series. In this installment, we are going to begin installing the body panels onto the frame of the car. So this should be a very exciting episode, at least in my opinion. Uh, please stay tuned if you would like to see how these panels go onto the frame and some of the things that I learned while doing this. I have already test fit a lot of the panels um, off the camera so things are ready to go together. In doing so, there are some adjustments that I had to make. Most of that involves a little bit of filing work. I'll bring you in close so I can show you some of those adjustments that I made. This corner of the car serves a good example of the adjustments that have been made. Now the camera is looking down the length of the car, so the components that you can see in the screen here are the cross member and the body panel on the side of the car. And if we look down on the end of the cross member, right down here, you'll see that I have filed out a little valley there. Now what that depression has done is give a space for the rivet heads on the body panel to fit. Without that space, the body panel on the side of the car does not want to sit square with the frame. Now something that could have been done from the factory to avoid this uh, extra step of filing work is as follows. Now the cross members on the frame are 14 and 7 eighths inches across. If those had been cut to roughly 14 and 3 quarter, that would have given an extra 1 16th of an inch of clearance on each side of the frame, allowing the body panels to go on and sit nice and square. To install the body panels on the side of the car, 16 button head cap screws will be used. Now these happen to be, I believe, 1024 thread by 5 eighths of an inch long. Of course, Titan Train supplies these. They also supply a lock nut as well to use on these, so that is eight per side down the length of the car. Now, as mentioned earlier, the holes should line up very nicely for installing the body panel onto the frame. If you're building one of these cars and your holes do not line up, there are a couple of things you may need to check. Make sure that your cross members are nice and square down the length of the frame. Also, as mentioned earlier, the rivet heads stick out from the back side of this aluminum angle, so you may need to file in that relief cut on the end of the cross members in order for this piece to sit nice and square. So as I can go ahead and begin to install this on the side, you'll notice that the fastener should go in nice and easy. There's one in, there's two, drop straight in the hole without any force or any wiggle with alignment. I have noticed a very high level of precision from whoever the gentleman was, or lady for that matter, that manufactured these components at Titan. They did a very good job. I checked uh, some of the measurements off of their blueprints for where these holes should be, and they are very, very accurate. I'm talking maybe a 32nd of, of an inch worth of uh, um, precision on their holes. So they did a very good job with building these different components. That's already all the cap screws in on this side, so I'm going to begin the other as well. I believe I'll probably throw the camera up on a time lapse so you can see this process go together without having to watch it in great detail. I believe all the viewers you're watching probably know how to use a, uh, an Allen key and a socket wrench just to tighten these components together. Well, all the body panels are now on the car, and this is a big milestone in its construction. There are a couple of things I learned during this process. For one, it sure would have helped to have a second set of hands, just because of the size of the different pieces and components. Uh, getting the first couple of fasteners started was a touch tricky, but I did manage on my own. Let me take you around to the back right corner. There's something I'd like to point out. The extra time spent filing was well worth it. Take a look at the alignment on these two panels here in this corner. Notice this gap here is even all the way down, indicating that these two panels are sitting square against each other. In addition, this transition here is smooth. 
this piece ends at the same uh, elevation as the side piece. Without filing the ends of the cross members, that may not have been able to have been achieved. The opposite end of the car will need a little bit more time spent with the file. If you'll notice that the gap between these two body panels is a touch larger and more prominent than the other side, uh, this is indicating a couple of things going on here. For one, if this end panel was to be fully secured, it would begin to rotate out. I'm exaggerating a little bit here by hand, um, but this end panel would begin to rotate out, and there's a reason for that. That reason is that the main frame, shown center of the screen, is just a touch too long. A very, very small amount, just a little bit of time spent with the file can knock that length down a touch, allowing these two panels to sit together nice and square and also remove that gap between the two of them. I believe at this point we'll end the video for part four. Thank you for watching. If you wish to be notified when part five is posted, please consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the notifications button. If you've learned anything from this part in the video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you've appreciated some of the uh, different camera angles that have been seen in previous videos, well, you can thank that roll of duct tape sitting right there on the table. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in part five.